thank you for thank you for coming to this uh, this beginning of this new campaign. Uh, as you know, we're starting with uh, uh, some talk. They are not just targeting U24. There had been some people that uh, were asking about uh, coaching. They were at, uh, asking about various non necessarily U24. Uh, so we decided we tried to uh, cover as much as we can. But we will start uh, with Sishan. Sishan was a captain, one of the uh, the captain in the, the previous campaign, and she will be our first uh, speaker this morning. She will talk about her U24 experience. So without further ado, I give to you, Sishan. Thank you, Martin, for inviting me to speak here today. Um, I'll share a little bit on my background about how I, uh, when I started playing frisbee. So I started playing competitively around 2014. Uh, in 2015, I got the opportunity to join Freak Show in Singapore. And then the following year, I played Wolves with Freak Show in London. So that was WGs in 2016. And then uh, earlier this year, uh, I captained and played U24 with Malaysia. So today, um, my aim for this sh uh, with this sharing today would really to be, hopefully I could inspire some of you during these tryouts, during your journey um, in your own clubs, and on maybe at roles, and also what you can expect to achieve when you go to roles. So at Bros, the tournament is slightly different from what we are used to here. Here we go like two days and we play so many games per day. Whereas at Bros, the whole tournament is about one week. You play maximum one to two day, uh, games a day. And what you can achieve is really a lot of fun. Because you are playing against players who you have never met before. You don't know what they are capable of, you don't know their play style, it's something completely different. So, you can <coughs> learn a lot of things from there as well. And I would really, really say it's an experience that you would never be able to get. So, a few things that I'd like to share, um, a few learning points that I'd like to share with you guys is firstly, to be able to rise to the challenge. So, um, when I was playing against Japan in my first roles, I think like our coach also knew strategically that perhaps it would be a more challenging game for us to play. So it was more of a, you achieve your, um, try to set a goal for yourself and try to achieve it. And personally, I wanted to really win my girl um, on offense or on defense. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. But knowing like Japanese players, I'm sure all of you have watched their games before. They are very fast, they are very sharp. And any small win that I get, like any score or just a cut that I get open from them, is a huge personal win for myself. So I hope that this weekend, I'm pretty sure that there's somebody in this room that you might be a bit afraid of matching up. So, Let's rise to that challenge because you know that, that you're not going to lose anything. If you're up against that player who everybody knows that is so good, and if you win against that player, you're gaining so much more. Right? So, I hope that uh, throughout this whole trial, all of you would really rise to the challenge and do not feel intimidated by who your opponents are. The second thing that um, really changed for me as a player is when I went to Rose, um, I learned the meaning of wanting something more than anything else. Uh, if you talk to any of the players that played with me for quite a while now, they will tell you that they will be able to justify that I never ever laid out before, I mean prior to this, because I was always very scared. The first time I laid out was when I went to Rose in 2016. And because I really understood what it meant to want something more than anything else. So big events like this, you might be able to 
you might really amaze yourself at what you're capable of doing. These tryouts, maybe mixed nationals really want it, girls really want it. So really give it all you got and try and impress. The coaches will be able to see. Thirdly, uh, I want to talk about facing defeat. Because in Ultimate, of course we have our glorious moments, but of course we also face a lot of um, So there are a lot of U24, past U24 players here. I think they wouldn't disagree with me when I say our biggest upset throughout the U24 journey was losing against Singapore. <laughs> so it was a very painful game because we were up like 5 to 6 points. And then, in the end we lost. I don't really remember how much we lost by. And it was extremely painful because that was the that was the best chance we got to be in the top eight. Because if not, then we'll be playing against Australia and chances are <coughs> not really much down favour. But I think how you learn to face the defeat is very important as well. Because, like I mentioned previously, Rose is a week long journey. Imagine on your first game, you're having a terrible game. You're not going to affect, let that affect you throughout your entire world's experience, right? So not only a game, perhaps you dropped the list and threw away something, right? Like, we all need to learn to pick ourselves up and really move on from it. So what helped me during Worlds was to constantly remind myself that um, I trained so hard to come here, I spent so much money to come all the way here, and it's not to feel sorry about myself. Right? A lot of times when after we uh, cause a turnover or we play badly, we like, oh, yeah, I did so badly, we look down and everything like that, you start feeling sorry for yourself. But that's something we all of us need to learn how to step, uh, like snap out of. What I can suggest is perhaps you have a, a quote, a reminder, or perhaps like some action for you to really just brush it off and move on. And lastly, I'd like to talk about how to manage your expectations <coughs> when you get to growth. Uh, I'll touch strongly about your game time. So, it being a competitive sport, game time is not going to be equal. At Rose, like at U24, there are some games where I played every other point, but there are some games that I also played only three points. Yeah? So I think what is important is that everybody really learn how to be a better teammate. I'm saying that because if you get the chance to play for U24, you have already qualified, right? And that already shows that you are of a certain level. But at the same time, all good players have to start from somewhere. I believe if you ask like great players like Christy, for example, Christy has played multiple worlds. And I'm sure like if not all like everybody here should have probably seen the way Christy has played. You don't know how good of a player she is. But there's a point of time where Christy probably was not that player that was always caught on the line. She had to start somewhere. And if let's say you make it to U24 and you find yourself on the sidelines, that is your starting point. So, um, lastly, uh, yeah, I like to say that if you want to really play well and do well at U24, the most important thing you need to do is to work hard. Yeah? From now on U24, you have about I think, six months. Yeah, about six months. Um, really use these six months to train very hard. Um, I'll share briefly about how I train personally <coughs> leading up to work. So, um, I train about five times a week for a good like uh, three to four months prior to work. I go to gym twice a week. I do my own either running or throwing sessions twice a week and I train with my club once. So something I'm really going to preach to everybody is the importance of gymming. Because uh, like, not only does it make you better on the field, like you can run faster, you're more explosive, you don't cramp as easily, but also 
it prevents injuries. And you do not want your journey, like your training so hard to find yourself getting injured like one week before worlds. Or the worst still like you go there and then you're playing a you're playing your warm-up game and then you get injured. Yeah, you're not doing justice to yourself, you're not just doing justice to your teammates. So um, in conclusion, I just like to wrap up my what I shared today and I hope that uh, everybody like we probably hope that you can take back something. First of all would be rising to the challenge. This weekend you find yourself playing against a player who you know is very good. Take that opportunity to show the coaches what you've got. This is something that the coaches will definitely see, not only in attitude, but in physical attitude as well. Secondly, if you really want it, show them. Yeah? Never lay out before. Go and lay out. You will never, I don't know, I, I don't know what else you have never done before. Do it. Right? Because this is something I'm sure everybody wants more than anything else right now. So, do it. <laughs> Thirdly, um, learning how to manage emotions and really facing defeat. If you find yourself in a scenario where you are devastated by what just happened, snap out of it, move on, and really show the coaches what else you want. And lastly, of course, managing expectations. Um, learn how to be a better team. One thing I also forgot to mention was um, about managing emotions. Your emotions are, you are responsible for your own emotions. Mm. Do not make it your captain's responsibility, do not make it your coach's responsibility to bring your team up. Right? Your coaches and captains will have a lot of things ready on their minds, and if they have to think about your emotions as well, that is something that is going to make it even harder for them. So really make it a uh, make it a priority to tune yourself emotionally and get back up. Okay, yeah, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nishan. Uh, if anyone has a question, How great were your cooking? 
so you, you talked about the game in Singapore, in Singapore being sort of that, that big disappointment. What was your first awe moment as a team in that battle? Like, like, yes, we got this, we, whatever, whether it's a, winning a point, whether it's some, what was your first? Okay, like, I, there, there's multiple moments, because I can't remember which game came first. But one of the biggest moments was when our own player got a talent hand against Canada. So I think like all of you would think that Canada, like Canadians, they are much better. <laughs> like Canada, Malaysia, Canada is much better, yeah. But even our player who was, I mean, he's so tiny. Yeah, he got a talent hand against this humongous players. Anything can happen at Worlds. <laughs> Any other questions? <coughs> what did you have to do to keep your family team in Canada? Uh, so, I think for me, like one of the biggest challenges as uh, a captain is definitely to not only think about the team, but to think about like your own play. So I think one thing that I can't remember, one of the coaches told me beforehand was to really be able to switch from captain mode and play mode. Because like if I'm on the field and I'm still thinking about my team instead of thinking how I want to play that point, it will really greatly affect um, the outcome of it. So I think uh, it also helped that I had like my like Laura and Lai Ping was captaining with me and also Greg was our group captain. So it helped that we had a group of people to do things together as well. And I think one very important thing was that like I think one of the nights I can't remember I can't remember after which day, but it was it, that day just didn't go very well. Um, we decided to come together as a team to really talk about it. And I think at the end, it ended off very positively. So going into the next day, I think it was against Japan. Japan? India? India. 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 So, when you play a tournament here, uh, it's over two days, right? You play seven games in two days. Uh, whereas at World, you might play seven games, but over a week. So, would you say that playing at World is much less tiring? Um, it's, so, at the beginning, of course it's easier, right? Because you're only playing one game a day. But when you reach like day three, day four, um, you start getting tired like <coughs> mentally as well. Because you have to constantly stay in focus like for the extended period of time for so many continuous days. And then like your body because like your mental you are already quite tired, your body naturally also become you will start feeling quite lethargic. I think that is the point where I talked about like being responsible for yourself. Um, if you are able to manage yourself, it takes things off, like it, it makes it less tiring for your captains. Because I think like one thing that Lighting really tried very hard towards the end was to get everybody's spirits up. And it's not an easy thing for one person to do. Yeah, so it is perhaps yeah, it's not physically as physically exhausting as it is compared to a two days tournament but then you'll find out like a lot of other things along the way as you progress through the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if there was any, what was your biggest regret from both? So um, when you go here, you don't have to go through this.
every time when I went on a point, I really like did it all out. And I feel like almost every like I can remember almost like all my highlights from most because that is what like keeps me going. And yeah, I don't think I had any regrets. <laughs> <laughs>